And welcome back to the Cloud Church. I'm Robert Breaker, missionary evangelist to the Spanish and English speaking people. I've got a good message for you today. Something very, very important. Something very few people preach on. But something that is oh so important for us today. This is something that the early Christians preached a lot on. And as time went on, um, th throughout the church history, there's a lot of preaching on this, but only in the last couple hundred years have people stopped preaching about this message. And I think it's time we got back to the preaching of the Word of God. So what I want to do today is preach you a message about what God revealed to Paul. What God revealed unto Paul. And we're going to look at what are called the mysteries of the Bible. God revealed some mysteries to Paul, because Paul is our apostle. Now, I'm not going to talk about the seven mysteries in the Bible. I believe later I'll, I'll begin a sermon series on the seven mysteries in the Bible. And when we get to, the, to those, we'll find that one of them was not revealed to Paul. One of them was revealed to John, the Apostle John. But I just want to stick with what was revealed to Paul today. So we're going to look at what God revealed unto Paul. And let us remember where we are today. Here's Jesus Christ. He died on the cross. He was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures, what we call the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Then the church started, and then the church began to go on. At the end of the church, we have the rapture. So we today are in the church, a time period, a dispensation. See our past sermons on dispensations and see the different dispensations in the Bible. Well, we're about right here. We're at the very end of the church age waiting for the rapture of Jesus Christ, and oh, is he coming soon? We're seeing biblical prophecies fulfilled in front of our eyes daily. Things going on in Israel, in the Middle East, and in Iraq, and Iran, and all these uh, different uh, prophecies being fulfilled. Gigantic army coming against Israel. So we are in the very end of the church period, and Jesus Christ is coming very soon. Now let us remember that when the book of Acts started, and I just finished a message on understanding the book of Acts. Go to the cloudchurch.org. Go to past, uh, it's not under past sermons, go to Bible studies. And what we learned in the Bible is that when Jesus Christ started the church, he used Peter to go out a lot, and the early apostles. And what they were preaching is not the same thing that we preach today. Because over here, we have God choosing Paul. And according to Romans chapter 11 and verse 13, the Bible says, this is so important, Paul tells us that he is the apostle to the Gentiles. And so we see Jesus Christ, a Jew, who said he came only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel, and he sent out his early disciples to Jews. But then Peter even went to some Gentiles as well. So there are Jews and Gentiles in the church. But because the nation of Israel rejected their Messiah, God chose Paul to take the gospel of salvation to the rest of the world. And God chose Paul to show people how to be saved. The gospel, of course, is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. So there is a difference of the preaching of Peter and Paul. Now Peter eventually began to preach what Paul did, which is salvation by, salvation by grace through faith alone, um, Acts chapter 15. So, when the church started, all the emphasis was on who Jesus was. Go to the cloudchurch.org, past sermons, and look at the sermon on the difference between the who and the what of salvation. Because, and we'll look at this, this is actually one of the things that, that God revealed unto Paul, is when the church started, all the emphasis was to Jews, and it was who Jesus was. It was all about believing in the name of Jesus. Why? Because Jesus Christ was the Messiah of the Jews. But then, the emphasis went from who Jesus is and trusting in who he was, which by the way, he is also God manifest in the flesh. The emphasis became trust in what Jesus did. And what did Jesus do? He's the gospel. What Jesus did is the gospel. It's the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. And over here, there was heavily influence in water baptism. You had to be baptized in water to receive the Holy Spirit if you were a Jew. But as the book of Acts continued, we see people getting saved without being baptized in water. Now let me rephrase that so that people understand correctly. They were baptized in water to receive the Holy Spirit. We receive the Holy Spirit today, not by water baptism, but by faith in the gospel. You can find that in Ephesians 1.13. At the very moment that a person trusts the gospel today, they are baptized with the Holy Spirit of God. So, 
With that stated, a little bit of a, of a summary, but also an introduction to what we'll look at today. What God revealed unto Paul. And I found seven things in the Bible that God revealed unto Paul. Seven things, seven mysteries that God revealed unto Paul. Now let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and look at verses 1 through 2. And again, this is the Apostle Paul speaking. And the Bible says, Let a man so account of us as of the ministers of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Verse 2, Moreover, it is required in stewards that a man be found faithful. So according to this, we are stewards of the gospel. Excuse me, of the mysteries. And we're to be found faithful preaching the mysteries. M-Y-S-T-E-R-I-E-S. Mysteries that God revealed unto Paul. So let me ask you something. Are you preaching the mysteries? Uh, there's a lot of preachers that would look at this sermon and say, what, what is he talking about? What are those mysteries? Well, we as Christians are to be found faithful being stewards of these mysteries, preaching them to everybody. Well, how can we do that if we don't know what they are? A lot of preachers have no idea what the mysteries are that God revealed unto Paul. So we're going to look at those today, the mysteries revealed unto Paul. And I have to say this before I continue. This is not the mysteries of the pagans. Years and years and thousands of years ago, the devil, as he does, he tries to imitate everything God does, the devil set up a pagan system of religion. And you go and you look at that pagan system of religion, and it's called the pagan mysteries. It's called the um, Elysium Mysteries. It's the mystery religion. There's a good book called Babylon Mystery Religion. And all throughout history, the pagans have taught, oh, there's certain mysteries that you can only learn if you're illuminated. And they believe that the illumination comes from, guess who? Lucifer. All those fake mystery religions eventually lead you to Lucifer. And they claim that Lucifer is the savior, the light bearer, the great architect. Well, those are false mysteries. Those are imitation mysteries of the true mysteries in the Bible. And I will not be teaching the false mysteries. I'm teaching only the true mysteries that God revealed for us today from the Bible, the Word of God. This isn't New Age, this isn't Rosicrucian, this isn't Masonry. This is just Bible. Bible mysteries. So if you're in those false mysteries, they're going to lead you to a different place. But these mysteries, the true mysteries of God, will lead you to Jesus Christ for salvation. So that's something so important to say because we've seen a rise in the world of Luciferianism, people following Lucifer. And they believe in what they call the Luciferian doctrine and the, the, the Madame Blavatsky and the mysteries, the old pagan mysteries of Pergamos and all that. We're not interested in those mysteries. We're interested in the true mysteries that God himself gave to us, the church. So let's begin. What is the first mystery? Well, the first mystery, and I found seven mysteries that God revealed unto Paul, is the mystery of the gospel. Now this is an interesting thing here. And like I said, you probably won't hear this preached on Sunday morning in your church. Many ministers have begun preaching something other than the Bible, and, and many churches today try to follow Peter when the Bible tells us we should follow Paul. Why does the Bible tell us to follow Paul? Because God revealed to him the mysteries for the church age for us today. So don't get messed up in following Peter because Peter was preaching to Jews a, a gospel to the Jews, and he got straightened out. And in Acts 15, he says, you know what? It's no water, no longer water. It's we believe you're saved by grace through faith. And that's how we're saved today, by faith, not by works. So we can't follow Peter. We've got to follow the Apostle Paul, our Apostle. So let's quickly look at this. And I wish I could go into detail on every one of these mysteries, but I've only got about an hour's time, so I'm going to go as quickly as I can through these mysteries. But the first one is the mystery of the gospel. And hopefully later I'll preach a series on the seven mysteries in the Bible. And they'll be a little bit different because one of them won't be one revealed to Paul. One of them will be one revealed to John as well. And, but a lot of them overlap with what I'm teaching today. And we will go into detail. And I'll take in one um, sermon message on each one of those mysteries. So we will go more in detail, in, in detail later. But now I'm just mentioning the mysteries that God revealed unto Paul. So Romans chapter 16 and verse 25, Romans 16, 25, 
The Bible says, Now to him that is of power to establish you according to my gospel, my gospel, the Apostle Paul is saying, and the preaching of Jesus Christ according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began, but is now made manifest, and by the scriptures of the prophets according to the com commandment of the everlasting God made known to all nations for the obedience of of faith. So this mystery is talking about the gospel that God revealed unto Paul to go into all nations to preach. It's a mystery that was kept secret since the world began. Go to Galatians chapter 1. And I apologize if I'm going very quickly, but this is a um, very long message. It's got seven points, so I need to go as quickly as I can. But I do want to mention as quickly as possible every one of the seven mysteries. There might be more. I've heard many people say, well, I found ten. Well, I found twelve. Well, these are the seven most important mysteries that God gave to Paul that we should be preaching today and faithful stewards of these mysteries. So Galatians chapter 1, verse 9 through 12, we read this. Galatians chapter 1, verse 9 through 12. And as we bef said before, so I say now again, if any man preach any other gospel new than that, each have, than that which ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God, or do I speak to please men? For if I yet please men, I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, verse 11, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. Look at that. Neither was I received it of man, neither was I taught it, but by the revelation of Jesus Christ. So he says, by the revelation of Jesus Christ, God revealed unto me the gospel. What is the gospel? 1 Corinthians 15, verses 1 through 4. That is the gospel. And it is that Christ died for our sins, was buried, and rose again the third day, according to the scriptures. So the gospel is the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. But it says in the passage, whereby ye are saved. So you are saved by trusting the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, otherwise known as the blood atonement of Jesus Christ. So when you're trusting the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, you're trusting the blood of Jesus Christ. So it's trusting in what Jesus did here on the cross. So the gospel for us today isn't what it was for the early Jews, trusting who Jesus is, trusting in him as the Messiah. It is trusting what Jesus did, the sacrificial blood atonement. Our lamb slain for us, for our sins in our place. It's trusting what Jesus did. Um, I said I'd read to verse 12, and I did. So let's go to Galatians chapter 2, verses 1 through 5. Galatians 2, verse 1. And then 14 years after, I went up again to Jerusalem, to Jerusalem with Barnabas, and took Titus with me also. And I went up by revelation. Here's a revelation. God revealed unto Paul, hey, go to Jerusalem. And communicated unto them that gospel... Now, when he says he went to Jerusalem, where's that? That's where Peter and the early apostles were. He said, I went up to Jerusalem. He said, I communicated unto them that gospel. We have gone verse by verse through the book of Galatians as we're going through our verse by verse Bible study. And it talks about that. And in Acts chapter 15, we find Paul going to Jerusalem and talking with the early church. And that's when we see Peter stand up. And Peter says, we believe that they, Gentiles, shall be saved by grace, even as we, grace through faith. So Paul was revealed this gospel, and he took that gospel to the early apostles. And so the early apostles realized, okay, no longer do we preach to Jews, uh, trust in the name of Jesus and get baptized in water. Now we preach to the Jews, Jesus Christ, the Lamb slain before the foundation of the world. Jesus Christ, death, burial, resurrection for your sins. And that's what saves you is trusting what he did, not doing something yourself. So you see how, according to the Bible, when the church began, it would begin by preaching a different message to Jews. But yet, when Peter was preaching, he was saying, this same Jesus that you crucified and you killed that rose again. But he was preaching the death, burial, and resurrection as a murder indictment. He was saying, you guys killed that guy. Well, that guy is the Messiah, so trust him and then be baptized in water. So there were two different messages beginning in the church. But Paul was the one to whom God revealed, now this is the gospel and this is what we preach. And this verse we just read, Paul says, I took that to the early apostles. They accepted it and began to preach it as well. Let's read it again. <clears throat> Chapter 2 and verse 2 of Galatians. And I went up by revelation and communicated unto them that gospel which I preach among the Gentiles, but privately them which were of reputation, lest by any means I should run or had run in vain. And then he says, but neither Titus who was with me, and, and then on and on and on. But look at verse 4. 
and that because of false brethren unawares brought in who came in privily to spy out our liberty which we have in Christ Jesus that they might bring us unto bondage verse 5 to whom we gave place by subjection no not for an hour that the truth of the gospel might continue with you so he's saying look this is what God told me to preach he said, I took it to them by revelation. God revealed to me, take this to them and tell the early apostles that that's what's to preach. And that's what they preached. I don't know if this helps, but I see a line in my Bible from verse 5 all the way across to verse 14. And in verse 14 it says, But when I saw that they walked not uprightly according to the truth of the gospel, I said unto Peter before them all, that thou being a Jew livest after the manner of the Gentiles, and not as the Jews, why compellest thou the Gentiles to live as the Jews? So that's even more proof that it's Paul told Peter this is what God said to preach God revealed that to me that this is the gospel it's all about what Jesus did we need to preach that and he chewed Peter out because Peter was being a hypocrite and not walking uprightly according to the truth of this gospel so that's the revelation of the gospel it's the difference between who versus what and it's God choosing Peter to be our apostle and saying now, excuse me, choosing Paul to be our apostle. And God said, Paul, this is why I died on the cross. I died for the Jews in order to come back and set up my kingdom, but the Jewish nation rejected me. So now I reveal to you, this is what I want preached until I come back and begin working with the Jews again. And what is it? 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Um, I can't remember right now the actual verse. But there's a verse, I believe it's, well, is it Romans 2.16? Let me look it up. The verse in which Paul says that we will be judged according to that gospel that God revealed to him. That's it, Romans 2.16. Romans 2.16, In the day when God shall judge the secrets of men by Jesus Christ according to my, did you hear what he said? My gospel. We are only saved today through this gospel. That's the only way to have salvation. And that was revealed to Paul. And Paul revealed that to the early apostles. They all got on the same page and they all went out in the whole world preaching that. Now yes, Peter preached more to Jews, but he also preached to Cornelius, a Gentile. Paul preached more to Gentiles, but everywhere he went, Paul went to the Jew first and also the Greek. He went to the synagogue. So this is the gospel for us today. Can you see how important that mystery is? How many preachers actually preach this gospel for salvation? Well, let's go look at a couple more things about this. First Peter chapter 1, and I'm going to go a little bit more in detail in this one than the others. But in First Peter chapter 1, verse 10 through 12, look what Peter says. In First Peter chapter 1, verse 10 through 12, he says, Of which salvation, because that's what the gospel is, it's salvation for us today. Of which salvation the prophets have acquired and searched diligently, that prophesied of the grace that should come unto you. That's what we're in right now. We're saved by grace, not by water baptism, not by works, not by the law. We're saved by grace. And it says that should come unto you, searching what or what manner of time the Spirit of Christ which was in them did testify when it testified, uh, did signify, when it testified beforehand the sufferings of Christ and the glory that should follow thereafter. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves, but unto us, they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them that have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look unto. Look at what Peter says. He says, this gospel is revealed unto us. But we just read Paul, and Paul said, no, 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 that, that mystery of the gospel was revealed to me. So how could Peter say that that 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4 was revealed to him? The only way he could say that is God revealed it to Paul. And as we read in Galatians, Paul took it to the early apostles. And in chapter 15 and verse 11 of Acts, Peter says, We believe that we are saved by grace through faith, without works. Uh, 1 Peter 1, 18 through 20. For as much as you know that we're not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by traditions from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you. Well, how was Jesus manifest? He was revealed to Paul that the death, burial, and resurrection is what saves us. And we trust in that. We trust in what Jesus did. And that's how we were saved today. So that's the mystery of the gospel. And it was revealed to Paul. And Paul took it to the church in Jerusalem. 
and said, this is what God told me to tell you to preach to the lost, both Jew and Gentile alike. So yes, Peter began preaching something different. And Paul told him to preach this, but God did straighten out the early apostles and tell them to preach something else. Preach the gospel, God revealed to Paul, to preach 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Now, what's the next mystery? Well, the second mystery still has to do with salvation, but it has to do with what happens after salvation. And the second mystery that God revealed unto Paul is the mystery of being in Christ and Christ being in you. So let's put it as this, as Christ in you. Christ in you, but it also has to do with you being in Christ as well. So this is another thing that God revealed unto Paul. And what did he reveal unto Paul? He revealed what happens after you get saved. After you trust this gospel, what happens? Well, let's go to Colossians chapter 1 and verse 18. And it says, He is the head of the body, the church. That's Jesus Christ. Who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, and in all things he might have the preeminence. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. And having made peace through the blood of his cross, by him to reconcile all things unto himself. By him I say whether they be things in earth or, or things in heaven. And you that were sometimes alienated and enemies in your mind by wicked works, yet now hath he reconciled in the body of his flesh through the death to present you holy and unblameable, unprovable in his sight. Through his body, in his death, he, he produced what's called the body of Christ. Continue reading here. If you continue in the faith, grounded and settled, and be not moved away from the hope of the gospel which ye have heard, and which was preached to every creature which is under heaven, whereof I, Paul, am made a minister. Now, let's uh, look at verse 24. Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. Verse 25, whereof I am made a minister according to the dispensation of God which is given to me to you, word, um, which is given to me to, to fulfill the word of God. Now verse 26, even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations but is now made manifest unto his saints. And look at the colon, there's two dots after verse 26, that means 27, it's going to tell us what the mystery is. This is the definition of the mystery. To whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So this is being in Christ, or having Christ in you. And this is what's called the body of Christ. The body of Christ is all safe people. It began at the cross. You can go to Bible studies, and uh, we've just finished a, a sermon there on when did the body of Christ start. There's another one called when did the church start. These people here, Peter, and these early Christians, when they were saved, they received the Holy Spirit. They were baptized in the Holy Spirit, with the Holy Spirit. When you get saved today, you get baptized in the Holy Spirit. Well, when you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, you become part of the body of Christ. So these people back here, the Jews, who were trusting in who Jesus was, they got into the body trusting in who Jesus is, but we get in the body trusting in what Jesus did. But we're all in what's called the body of Christ. And that's a mystery that God revealed unto Paul. It says, Christ in you. When you're saved, Jesus Christ comes into you and dwells inside of you and lives in you. But even though he's in you, you are in him. You're in his body the body of Christ. And the body of Christ will leave at the rapture. So the body of Christ is all saved people who have come to Jesus Christ after he died and trusted him as Savior. Uh, I, I mentioned Ephesians 1.13 earlier, but we're so close. Let's go to Ephesians 1.13 and look at how we are saved today. Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 13 says, whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation. And whom also after that ye believed, you were sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. So we are sealed with the Holy Spirit the moment we believe. According to the gospel. So first you hear the gospel, you believe the gospel, and when you do, you're sealed with the Holy Spirit. And when you become sealed with the Holy Spirit of God, you become part of the body of Christ. So you're in Christ but Christ is in you. Let's go to Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8. Like I said, I don't want to go too much in detail because there's so many different mysteries we have to cover in this one session. But Romans chapter 8, verses 9 through 11, look what it says. 
But ye are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. And if so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Right? 8, 9, yep. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of these. And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin, but the Spirit is life because of righteousness. But if the Spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his Spirit that dwelleth in you. So the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. So Christ dwells in us. That's the mystery God revealed. But he dwells in us in the form of the Holy Spirit. All throughout this Old Testament period, the Holy Spirit could come and go, and come and go, and come and go upon people. That's how we got the Old Testament. The Holy Spirit of God came and spoke through the lips of those early prophets. So it was God, the Holy Spirit, in them speaking His Word. But today, when we get saved, we get the Holy Spirit, and it can't leave. It says we're sealed till the day of redemption, Ephesians 4.30. And that was a mystery that God revealed to Paul, that when you get saved in the church age through trusting this gospel, you are sealed with the Holy Spirit of God. That means the Holy Spirit of God is inside you, and it cannot leave. It's there forever. Look at 1 Corinthians 3.16. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct them? But we have the mind of Christ. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm in 2.16. 3.16. 3.16 says, Know ye not that you are the temple of God, and the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? So when you're saved, you have the Holy Spirit of God dwelling inside of you. And how are you saved? Through this gospel. So if you've never heard the gospel, how can you believe in something you've never heard? We've looked at verses that say you have to hear the gospel to believe the gospel. And when you believe the gospel is when you're sealed with the Holy Spirit. So if you don't know the gospel, never heard the gospel, not trusted in the gospel, then you're not saved. So you have to be saved by hearing the gospel first, understanding and believing it. Under the cloudchurch.org, look up past sermons and look up the sermon, The Order of Salvation. Because the Bible clearly teaches that faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And you've got to hear the gospel before you can believe the gospel to be saved. I could talk a lot more about that, but let me continue to the next one. So this is the mystery of being in Christ, or Christ in you. But the next one we're going to look at is the mystery of the body of Christ. So I'm going to split those into two different ones. I kind of got ahead of myself a little bit. This is the mystery of having Christ in you. Now we're going to look at the mystery of being in Christ, or in the body of Christ. Let's look at that. Um, Ephesians chapter 3. Ephesians chapter 3. So... I kind of lumped these two together, but they are kind of distinct and different. First, God revealed the gospel to Paul. Then he revealed, after you're saved, this is what happens. The Holy Spirit dwells in you. But God also revealed to Paul this mystery, that there is a thing called the body of Christ, and all saved people are a part of the Christ body. So we are in Christ, or in his body. Ephesians chapter 3, and verse 29, or excuse me, verse 2 through 9. Ephesians 3, 2. If you have heard of the dispensation of the grace of God which is given me to you, word, how that by revelation he, God, made known unto me the mystery. So Paul says, by revelation, God revealed unto him a mystery. Well, what is it? Well, he continues. In verse 3, it ends in a semicolon, as I wrote afore a few words. But then he tells us what the mystery is. Verse 4. Whereby, when you read, you may understand my knowledge and the mystery of Christ which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of man, as is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Now Paul said, God revealed this mystery to me, Paul. But he says, now it's revealed to the holy apostles and prophets. How? Whatever God revealed to Paul, he took it straight back there to them and said, look, this is what God said, and they accepted it. You've got to remember that. That's why Paul could say it's revealed to the holy apostles and prophets, but it was revealed through Paul to them. Now, in Ephesians chapter 3, in verse 5, Which in other ages were not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the Spirit. Semicolon. Now here is the definition of this mystery. That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise by Christ, in, uh, by Christ, in Christ, excuse me, by the gospel. So by the gospel that God revealed to Paul, the Gentiles can be fellow heirs into the same body, the body of Christ. Well, to be a fellow heir means someone must have been an heir before. Who are the heirs back here? 
Well, before God revealed unto Paul the gospel, there were people getting saved. They were all Jews. And guess what? They were heirs to salvation. They had eternal life. How did they get that eternal life? Believing who Jesus was. And when they did, they got the Holy Spirit just like we get the Holy Spirit today. But with Paul, there was a change. No longer are we getting the Holy Spirit by water baptism. Now to be saved, receive the Holy Spirit, and become part of the body of Christ and have Christ in you, it's by trusting the gospel. So fellow heirs. So there are heirs here and there's heirs here. So the body of Christ started at the cross. Go to cloudchurch.org, look up Bible study um, videos. And we have one there called, When Did the Body of Christ Start? And it shows, without any shadow of a doubt, that it had to have started with Jesus Christ. Probably no one in it until Pentecost, but no one knew anything about it until Paul, because God revealed unto Paul, Look, I set up a body by my death on the cross, and I put people in my body as it pleased me. And today, the only way into my body is by trusting the gospel. And then you become a fellow heir with the ones that were already in the body. So that's the body of Christ. Now, did I read all the way down to verse 9? No, let's read starting at verse 7. Wherefore I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Unto me whom less than least of all the saints is this grace given that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. And to make all men, look at verse 9, See what is the fellowship of the mystery which was from the beginning of the world and hath been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ. So this was a mystery that God hid from the foundation of the world. And God did not choose to reveal this mystery even though it was taking place. There were people being saved into the body until Paul. And then God said, Paul, I'm going to tell you about something called the body of Christ that I've set up. And I'm going to tell you how to get into it for the people that get saved later. But there were some people back here that I put into it. So the people that get saved through this preaching of the gospel will be fellow heirs. Fellow heirs. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 22. Like I said, I could just go into all these and take an hour on each one of these. But uh, first, uh, Ephesians 1, 22. And it says, And hath put all things under his feet, talking about Jesus, and gave them to be the head over all things to the church, which is his body, the fullness of him that filleth all in all. So the body is the church, and the church is the body. And Jesus Christ is the head of the body. Colossians 1.18 tells us what the body is. Colossians 1.18 says, And he is the head of the body, comma, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, and in him, and in him all things he might have the preeminence. Now, 1, Corinthians 12, 1 Corinthians 12 tells us how do you get into the body. Jews and Gentiles were put into the body in different ways. Until Paul began preaching the right gospel that God revealed unto him, the Jews were getting into the body a different way. And then they all got on the same page. So we today can only get in the body one way. 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12 and 13. For as the body is one and hath many members, and all the members of that one body being many are one body, so also is Christ. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. So by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Who is the all? Jews and Gentiles alike, when they were baptized with the Holy Spirit, became part of the body of Christ. But as we've seen, the book of Acts is a transition book. It's a change. And there was a, a, a progression that took place where the Jewish nation could still have received their Messiah. And he would have come back and set up his kingdom. That happened at the end of Acts chapter 7. And then Stephen was stoned. And Stephen says, I see Jesus Christ standing on the right hand of God. Jesus Christ was standing up, ready to come back and set up his kingdom had the Jews accepted him. But they did it. So Jesus Christ sat back down. And God said, now to the Gentiles. So these Jews got into the body of Christ by being baptized, but they got in by believing who Jesus was and water baptism and gave them the Holy Spirit. We are not saved that way today. We are saved through what God revealed unto Paul, this gospel. And the only way for us, Gentiles, to get into that body of Christ is by trusting the gospel. And there are many, many other verses. Uh, since we're real close, let's just go back to Ephesians chapter 2 real fast. Ephesians 2.16, look what it says. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby. One body. He said, reconcile both by one body, in one body. Here's the body of Christ offered up for us. Shed his blood for us. 
that he might reconcile both into one body. Who's the both? Jews and Gentiles. And the only way for us to be safe today is follow Paul, our apostle, the gospel God revealed unto him. When we do, it's revealed through Paul that God puts us in the body of Christ, but we are in Christ and Christ is in us. So that's amazing. That's amazing what God revealed unto Paul. Look, Ephesians chapter 4, since we're in Ephesians, go to Ephesians 4, verse 4. One Lord, one faith, one baptism. Uh, excuse me, I read verse 5, verse 4. There is one body, one body, one body, and one spirit, even as you are called in one hope of your calling. So there is one body, the body of Christ, and it's made up of both Jew and Gentile. We that get in the body through the preaching of Paul are fellow heirs with these folks who are also in the body of Christ because that's the church. The church is the body. Um, verse 11 is talking about in context the body. And verse 11 says, And he gave some apostles, and some prophets, and some evangelists, and some pastors and teachers. What for? What for? Verse 12, For the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So it starts out, he says he gave some apostles. Where were the apostles? Right here, right after Jesus. And some prophets. You look at the book of Acts, there was a guy named Agabus, and the Bible says he was a prophet. He's talking about this time when the church started, these Jews. And it says, they were for, well, it says, and some evangelist. Philip is called an evangelist. Philip shows up in chapter 8 of Acts, all before Paul. And it says, for the edifying of the body of Christ. So the body of Christ must have began, but they were saved into it differently until Paul and God revealed to Paul, no, this is the way I want people saved. You see, here they had to trust who I was because there was still a possibility that I could come back. But the Jewish nation rejected Jesus, so God said, Okay, I'll save the same by believing in what I did, trusting in the gospel that I revealed to Paul. Do you see how important Paul is? Go to cloudchurch.org and look up past sermons. I believe there's one called The Difference Between Peter's Ministry and Paul's Ministry and, and the importance of following Paul. Um, most churches nowadays, they do not understand the mysteries. And you can't be saved until you understand the mysteries. Because the number one mystery is the gospel. And you can't get saved unless you trust this gospel. How important is the Apostle Paul? Well, next is the mystery of the Bride of Christ. And that we'll find in Ephesians chapter 5. Which, by the way, the bride is the body and the body is the bride. A lot of preachers I know that don't know about this. That, that don't preach the body of Christ. Go to Ephesians chapter 5 verse 22. Ephesians 5.22 says, Wives, submit yourselves to your own husbands as unto the Lord, for the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. So, the Bible's saying that as you have Christ and the church, it says that the Christ is a type of the, of the husband, or the head, just as the man is the head of the wife. And the church is the type of a wife. So, as the woman, the wife, is to submit to her husband, so the church should submit to Christ. So what does that mean? That means that the church is a type of a bride in the marriage relationship. So the church is the bride of Christ. And there's a lot more that I could read here, but let me skip down to verse 32. He's talking about, well, no, 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 let me back up to verse 27. That he might present it to himself a glorious church. Who is he talking about? The wife, the bride. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. Verse 32 now. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. So Christ and the church is a type of a head of a man with his wife. Which means the bride is the church. So there are many, many things I'd like to go into here. I could probably take a whole hour on this. Um, but I'll try to go quickly. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 2. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 2, look what the Bible says. The Apostle Paul says to us that are saved, the church, the body of Christ, For I am jealous over you with a godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. So who is the husband of the body of Christ? Us saved people? It's Christ. So what does that make the church? His bride. I mean, it's that simple. Now, there's a lot more here. You can tell I've got from here down 
it's just verses to cover this, but I'm afraid if I continue, I won't be able to finish this sermon. So let me um, just quickly skip ahead to Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2, as it's talking about the bride, and it says it's the Lamb's wife. Well, who is Jesus Christ? He's the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And the Bible says that when you're married, you're one flesh, you're one body. So when you come to Jesus and accept Jesus as your Savior, you're part of the one body. You're part of His body. He's in you and you are in Him. You're one with Him, just as a wife is one with her husband. The body of Christ is one with the Lamb. And who is the Lamb? Jesus Christ. So in Revelation chapter 2, verses 1 and 2, look at this. Let's see. Revelation 21, excuse me. Revelation 21, verse 1 and 2. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. So there is a bride, and the bride is called New Jerusalem. So maybe that's why in Galatians chapter 4, verse 25 and 26, the Apostle Paul says that Jerusalem above, New Jerusalem coming out of heaven, is the mother of us all. And like I said, we don't have much time to go into this, but let's look at uh, chapter 21, where we are, and look at verse 9. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials, full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. The Lamb has a wife. The Lamb is Jesus. Who's his wife? Well, he is the husband, so what's that make us? The wife. Ephesians chapter 5. Now, Revelation 21, 9 says, I will show thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried him away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. And then it says, on and on and on, and I don't have time to read it, but that the bride of Christ is like a city. Is like a city. So maybe that's why in 2 Corinthians 5, 1 through 2, it talks about the, the bride of Christ or, or the church being a building of God, a house, heavenly in the heavens. That's why the Apostle Paul says our house, which is from heaven. Ephesians chapter 2 talks a lot about the household of God and the foundation, the building, the holy temple, builded together. So the Bible says that the body of Christ is like a building that God built together. And it's a city that comes down from heaven someday. Well, a lot more that I can say about that. Maybe someday I'll make a video on who is the bride of Christ and devote it completely to that. So we have the mystery of the bride of Christ. Who is the bride of Christ? The church. Now we have the mystery of the rapture. Now that is found in two places, and it's something that God revealed unto Paul. And do you, do you see what's going on? Everything God revealed to Paul, it all happens after the cross. So even the cross was a mystery. I just read in Corinthians, had the, had the prince of this world known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. They didn't know that when Jesus died on the cross, he was going to rise again. Had Satan known that, he would not have killed Jesus Christ. So from then on, we have mysteries revealed. Many of them. And guess who they're being revealed to? Paul. And then Paul is revealing them to the early apostles. Why is Paul so poor? Why didn't God reveal these mysteries to Peter? Well, like I told you, there was a period here which was a transition in which the Jews could have accepted Jesus, and this parentheses period could not have happened. Had the Jewish nation accepted Jesus... He would have come right down and set up his millennial kingdom right there. Might have been seven years of tribulation first, because that did have to happen according to Daniel. So there was an opportunity for these Jews to accept their Messiah. So you see why God waited to reveal things until Paul? Until God showed for sure it's set in stone, the Jews will not accept me, so now the gospel is for Jew and Gentile alike. So these things were revealed after Jesus, and Paul was so important. So let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And this is what we're talking about, the mystery of the rapture. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 50. Now I say, brother, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. Hmm. God revealed this to Paul. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in a twinkling of eye, at the last trump. For the trump shall sound, and the dead shall be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruption, corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal shall, shall, must put on immortality. 
So when this corruption shall have put on corruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So this verse here, these verses are talking about the rapture, the time in which when Jesus Christ comes back, we get a glorified body, and we're changed. We'd love to go into that in more detail. But... Got to hurry, got to hurry, got to get these seven mysteries out there. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. You see how important these mysteries are? Without these mysteries revealed to Paul, we know nothing about anything. We don't even know how to get saved without these mysteries revealed to Paul. We don't know that we're in the body of Christ. We don't know that we have the Holy Spirit unless this is revealed to Paul. We don't even know that we have a blessed hope in the future. There are some people that say, well, we don't follow Paul. A lot of uh, Methodist people, they, they look at people like me and say, well, you're too Pauline. No, I'm just a Bible believer, and I realize that God gave us the books of Romans through Philemon, and that's the heart of New Testament doctrine, because it's all about the mysteries God revealed unto Paul. And those are for us today, for salvation. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, or excuse me, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13, But I would not have you ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Those who die here in the church age, their bodies down here, but their souls in heaven. And guess what? When Jesus comes at the rapture, he's bringing their souls with them. And their bodies shall reunite, and they'll have a glorified body. So the rapture is a time in which we get our glorified bodies. Um... Verse 14, For this we say then to you by the word of God, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Therefore, um, excuse me, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the crowds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, come over one another with these words. So this also applies to the rapture. But 1 Corinthians 15, we saw the word mystery. So the mystery of the rapture. Must move on, must move on. The next one is the mystery of iniquity. Which is also the mystery that talks about the Antichrist. Which we know will come in this period called the Tribulation. Then Jesus will return at the Battle of Armageddon and rule and reign for a thousand years in the millennium. So this seven years, this time period, is when the Antichrist will come. But we're told in 1 John that there are many antichrists. And there's the spirit of antichrist. So even all throughout this time, there is a spirit of antichrist. But there is one antichrist that will come in the future. So this is an interesting mystery. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. You see, there are many antichrists, but one antichrist that will rule in the, in the tribulation period. But there are many antichrists, plural. Many people who are against Christ, and they're that way because they're dynamic, de demonically led by evil spirits. Second Thessalonians chapter two, and verse seven through nine. Let's see, I'm in first. If I can find it. Second Thessalonians two seven through nine. Paul says, "For the mystery of iniquity doth already work." So the mystery of iniquity is already working. Paul says in the day he lived. So from where Paul is living till today, there is a spirit of Antichrist that is against anything and everything that God wants. And it says, The mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders. The Bible teaches that after the rapture, the Antichrist will come in. And according to the Bible, there's one week remaining. So there's three and a half years here and three and a half years here. And during that time, the Antichrist will be killed, but he will come back to life after three days. Just like Jesus, Satan always imitates everything God does. And that Antichrist will come back to life. And according to the Bible, he'll go and he'll sit down in Jerusalem on the mercy seat, on the throne, uh, well, actually, on the Ark of the Covenant, and say, I am God. And the world will believe him, and many people will follow him, because he comes on with, in with signs and wonders. 
But guess what? He will be defeated when Jesus Christ returns at the battle of Armageddon. So the Bible has a lot to say about the future and about prophecy. But it's interesting that not only is this mystery of the Antichrist's future, but Paul said it doth already work. There's already the spirit of Antichrist working. The prince and power of the air. And the Bible says in the last days in which we live, there will be seducing spirits and doctrines of devils as the devil tries to deceive people with false doctrine. Well, that brings us to our last of the seven mysteries that I've found that God revealed unto Paul. And this is the mystery of the restoration of of Israel. Jesus Christ was a Jew. The Bible says he came only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He went to Jews. He chose 12 Jewish disciples. He sent them to Jews to try to get them to believe who he was, to believe that he was the Messiah. They had to trust in his name. And they received the Holy Spirit by water baptism. But Around about Acts chapter 7, the end of chapter 7, when God was standing up on his throne, he sat back down. He was standing next to the throne, he sat back down because the Jews as a nation rejected for the third time. I can show you that sometime, the three different times that the Jewish nation rejected their Messiah. They rejected John the Baptist, the one sent from the Father, voice of one crying in the wilderness. They rejected God the Son, Jesus Christ, by crucifying him. And even, even in chapter 7 of Acts... Stephen says, why do you resist the Holy Ghost? So, strike three, Israel. Three times they rejected God. So God says, strike three, that's it. I'm going now to the whole world with the gospel that I'm revealing unto Paul. And that's what God did. But God is not done with Israel. God is not finished with the nation of Israel. Go to Romans chapter, 12, chapter 11. Out here in this tribulation time period, even though the devil is reigning and ruling on this earth for seven years. The Bible says there will be a remnant saved, and that will be the people of Israel, the nation of Israel. God will begin to deal with again and save. Because there's prophecy after prophecy after prophecy in the Old Testament and even in Revelation and other places that in this thousand-year reign, God will have the nation of Israel as his nation again. And Jesus Christ will rule and reign on his throne. This is supposed to be a throne here. And he'll sit on the throne and for a thousand years he'll rule and reign in Israel. And his chosen nation Israel will, will gain what belongs to them. So God's not done with Israel. But yet there's a lot of churches today that say, Oh, well we're the nation of Israel now. God's finished with Israel so all their promises go to us. No, no. God promised that he would do some things for them. And... They rejected him, so the church age is for us to get saved, Gentiles. Sure, Jews as individuals can get saved today too, but they all have to come through this gospel. But God will deal with Israel again after the rapture. He will go back to his nation. That's how long-suffering and loving God is. So, 11, Romans chapter 11. I say then, hath God cast away his people? That's talking about the Jews. God forbid, for I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham of the tribe of Benjamin. Verse 2, God hath not cast away his people which he foreknew. What? Ye not, what ye not, that the scripture saith of Elias, how he maketh intercession to God against Israel, saying, and then it goes on and it begins to talk about this. Let's look at verse 14. Well, actually, let's go to verse 11. I see that, say then, have they stumbled that they should fall? God forbid, but rather through their fall, salvation is coming to the Gentiles for to provoke them to your jealousy. So because the Jews as a nation, not all individuals, but the nation, the religious leaders rejected their Messiah, God said, let's take salvation to the Gentiles. Well, if you want to be saved today and you're a Jew, you still have to come through this way. But it says... For if the fall of them be the riches of the world, and diminishing of them the riches of the Gentiles, how much more their fullness? He says, For I speak unto you Gentiles, and as much as I am apostle of the Gentiles, I magnify my office. Yes, Paul is our apostle. You say, what's a Gentile? Anybody that's not a Jew is a Gentile. So if you were born in this world, and you weren't born of Jewish ancestry, you're a Gentile, and you need to be saved. And the way to be saved is through the gospel of Paul. But look at verse 14. If by any means I may provoke to emulation them which are in my flesh, I might save some of them. So the nation of Israel, as a nation, God's done with. 
But there are individual Jews that can be saved, just like these apostles were God's individual Jews, and they won other Jews. Paul won Jews to Jesus Christ through this gospel. But the nation will be saved again over here when God begins to deal with the nation of Israel. And he saves all the Jews. So there's a lot here. Um, but let's skip ahead to verse 20. Oh, I want to read it all, but it's just so wordy. Let's, let's look at verse 24. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and wert grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, which be the natural branches, grafted into their own olive tree? The picture here is that the nation of Israel is like an olive tree. And they were cut off, and we Gentiles were grafted in. And so God says, so what? If they're cut off, they're the natural branch. They will come back. So it's like a rebirth of the nation of Israel, is what it's saying. And then it says there in verse 25, For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles be come in. So once the fullness of the Gentiles happen, then God will save Israel as a nation again. And that's a mystery that God revealed unto Paul, the restoration of Israel. 26. And so all Israel shall be saved. That is, it is written, There shall come out of Zion the deliverer, and shall turn away in godliness from Jacob. This is my covenant to them when I shall take away their sins. So when do Jews get their sins taken away? Well, the Jewish nation will have their sins taken away over here. That's the nation. But each individual Jew, if you're alive today and you're a Jew, you have to come through the gospel of Paul. Or you could wait until the rapture, but there's no guarantee you'll make it. What if you die without it? The Bible says you'll be judged by this gospel. You're going to go to hell if you reject the apostle Paul. Well, not the apostle Paul, but reject the gospel of Jesus Christ revealed unto the apostle Paul. And so there it says in verse 27, this is my covenant in verse 28. As concerning the gospel, that's 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, they are enemies for your sakes, but as touching the election, they are beloved for the Father's sakes. For the gifts and calling of God are without repentance. For as in times past you have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. Even so have these all, and continues on and on and on. So, the gospel. Most Jews today reject Jesus Christ and want nothing to do with them. But guess what's going to happen in the future? Just as soon as the rapture takes place, guess what's going to happen? What we were preaching right here will be preached again right here. And these, the Bible says the two witnesses will come. The Bible says 144,000 will come. All this that was preached right here will be preached here. And it will be trust in who Jesus is. Trust in the Messiah. Be baptized in water. And let's show you some signs and wonders. Because the Bible says the Jews seek after a sign. So the very same thing that Peter began preaching will be preached again right here. And all the nation of Israel will have to accept the fact that they killed their Messiah, Jesus Christ. There was a famous, famous Jewish leader, a big rabbi that died a year or two ago. And on his deathbed, the last words he said, this Jewish rabbi was, Jesus was the Messiah. And a lot of Jews are looking at that and saying, wow, he was our, our rabbi and he said that. We, we should believe it. And so Jews worldwide are starting to wake up and say, Hey, Jesus is God. He was the Messiah. And all this thing we're seeing on the news today, all these Muslim countries completely outflanking Israel all the way around it. And Israel's this little dot. And they're all going to come against it to fight it. And the book says, the Bible says, God will save Israel. When he comes back in Armageddon, he will defeat all his enemies. And the Jews will have the land under Jesus Christ in the millennium. They're going to have to endure to the end in this time period. And some of them might even be killed. They'll have to flee to Selah Petra, the city of the rock. But God will feed them with manna from heaven, just like he did Moses. All these things are future. They were all a mystery. But they revealed to Paul. So let's end on this. What did God reveal to Paul? A lot of people don't understand. Oh, why Paul? Why is Paul in the Bible? I just don't get him. I don't understand him. Well, Paul was kind of a, kind of like what this is. He was kind of this parenthetical thing that could have happened or couldn't have happened, all depending on what Jews did. 
And as the Jewish nation reject Jesus, then God says, Okay, Paul, I have a reason for you being, and it's for you to preach the gospel for this time. And it's for you to expose and, and tell some mysteries that I'd have known. Paul was really, I guess you could call him a prophet, because God prophesied unto him the mysteries that he kept secret since the foundation of the world. What were they? The gospel. 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. Trust the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The only way to be saved is trust what Jesus did for you on the cross of Calvary. The next thing that God revealed unto Paul was that when you're saved, Christ is in you. I'll go ahead and take that off because that was more of this one. Christ is in you. When you're saved today through trusting the gospel, the Holy Spirit dwells in you. When? The moment you believe. These people had to speak in tongues to get the Holy Spirit. Not today. Tongues are for a sign, the Bible says. The sign is for the Jews. We're not Jews. We live by faith, not by sight, not by signs. The moment we believe, Ephesians 1.13, we are sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise. The body of Christ, which is the bride of Christ, was revealed unto Paul. This is what we're saved into. We're the Lamb's wife. We're the body of Christ. The rapture is coming someday. All who are saved and who aren't dead yet will be raptured out of here. And we'll get a glorified body. God revealed the mystery of iniquity. He told us all about the Antichrist, albeit in few words, but that someday the Antichrist is coming, just as prophesied in Revelation. But guess what? The spirit of Antichrist is alive today and is working diligently to make people not listen to Paul, to make people close their ears and say, Oh, Apostle Paul, no, 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 I don't accept him. Unless you accept him, you can't get the gospel of salvation for us today. You must follow the Apostle Paul. Also, the resurrection, restoration of Israel. You might be a Jew watching this, and you've wondered, why has it been 2,000 years since we've been able to get in our temple? Why do these Muslims have their own building over there, and we can't rebuild our temple in our own country? Don't worry about it. God revealed unto him that someday your temple will be rebuilt, and God will sit there. And in the book of Revelation, for a 1,000 years it says, God will sit there. So God will rebuild the nation of Israel. Don't worry about whether that will happen or not. It will. God foretold that all Israel will be saved in Romans chapter 11 to the Apostle Paul. So I appreciate you listening to this message. I hope it's been a blessing. I know I had to go fast, to, but I just wanted to present the things that God revealed to Paul. And I hope this message will show you how important it is to follow the Apostle Paul. I have a lot of friends that are Baptists, and a lot of them don't preach Paul. I hope after watching this video they will. Because we started with this verse, 1 Corinthians 4, 1 through 12. And it told us that we were to be faithful stewards of the mysteries of God, the mysteries of Christ. Well, there they are. If you're a Baptist preacher, if you're a Methodist, I don't care what kind of preacher you are. If you're a, a preacher and if you're saved and you love God, you need to be a faithful minister preaching these mysteries. The only way to do that is to put Paul in his proper, proper place and proper perspective. We don't worship the Apostle Paul. We worship Jesus Christ. But the only way we can come to Jesus Christ is through what God revealed to Paul. Simply stated. That's the best way to say it. So thank you so much for watching. Come back every week to thecloudchurch.org. We have a new sermon in English and Spanish every week. And I hope this has been a blessing to you. God bless you.